You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming, and some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus, Miko's Path. So, a little thing that I just noticed in the preferences is that I had not safe for work content switched to on. I mean, switched to off. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I've never ticked that button. It was just automatically off. So, I wonder if I missed anything. Um, hmm. Anyway, hopefully this won't affect our run. I don't think this will affect our run. Anyway, guys, let's see what lies for us further down the rabbit hole with Miko. All right. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Let me set alarms in. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> Everyone goes silent in an instant, leaving only the crackling from the fireplace resounding in the room. Miko begins playing the piece, soft piano notes reverberating around the room. He strokes the keys gently, but with confidence. The three of us sit in silence, not wanting to distract him, but also enchanted by the music. I don't think he would notice anything anyway, completely engrossed in playing. There's a genuine smile on his muzzle, and he closes his eyes from time to time, his tail swaying from side to side with the rhythm of the piece. It's like he's playing with his whole body, not just his paws. The piece he's playing is delicate and calm, like a meadow brushed by a gentle autumn breeze. It makes me feel like I'm floating above the ground, or being carried away by a gentle stream. It's touching something deep within me that I haven't felt for a long time. His paws move elegant and elegantly in wide swipes across the keys. It takes some effort, and he has to slow down in some parts, but from the look on his snout, it's clear that he's having a lot of fun. He looks, really ha he looks really happy when he plays. Yeah, I remember that from the times we were in middle school together. The only times when he looked genuinely happy was when he was playing an instrument. Right now, in his smile, I can see the boy he was back then getting lost in music and forgetting about the world around him. Suddenly, I hear steps somewhere behind me. Turning around, I see Torolf entering the room, holding banana in his paw. He raises his other paw to greet us, but doesn't say anything. Instead, he walks up to the free armchair and sits down quietly, listening to Miko playing. His steps feel deliberate and balanced. I hadn't noticed it before, but he walks in a really elegant way. Meanwhile, Miko finishes playing the piece. That was really nice, Miko. Miko turns toward him, surprised. Hi! Did we meet before? <laughs> I believe not. Lake mentioned you in a conversation, though. I know you're Carbon's friend. My name is Torolf. It's a pleasure to meet you. A pleasure for me as well. <laughs> that was something, Miko. Aw, oh, thanks. Even if you're saying that only out of courtesy, I can't help but envy him. I myself struggled with playing anything on piano, and there wasn't any fun in it for me. When I was listening to him play, I always felt inadequate. He started a bit earlier than me, and that was enough to discourage me. Miko used to tell me that I just lacked the resolve to push through the first phase when playing anything as a huge effort. But for me, it seemed like I would never get out of this phase. The truth is, I'd never applied myself, while Miko kept practicing and practicing. Now he's better than I ever will be. Nah, that was really great. Where did you learn to play like that? Well, I had music lessons in school, like everyone in Finland. We were playing mostly stringed and wind instruments, but we had the basics of piano. I spent a lot of time playing piano by myself, too. Oh, does that mean you can play too, Carvin? Um, not really. I had music lessons as well, but I was never good at it. Maybe you remember something from then, though? Maybe a few melodies, that's all. Would you like to play too? Oh, I don't know. I haven't played in a long time. And I was never good to begin with. Ah, oh, come on. I'm sure you're better than you think. We won't make fun of you. Don't worry. He has worry. He has worry written all over his face. I don't know if it's a good idea, Rune. I'll try. I... I might try... I don't know what I'm doing, but it's always so hard for me to refuse when others ask me politely. The excited look on Rune's face for sure played a big role here. I wouldn't want to let him down. Even though I know in the end I inevitably will. Let me save it right here, guys. Biko stands up from the piano and moves on to the closest armchair. I reluctantly walk over and sit down in front of the instrument. 
Rest, resting my paws on the keyboard. I notice they're shaking. What should I even play? I try to think of any track I was ever learning. Hmm, there is one that was fairly easy to play, and I think I remember it. I play the scale in which I think the track was composed, just to make sure that I remember it correctly. I don't know why among all the ones I've learned, to le I've tried to learn, this one stuck with me. I haven't listened to it in a long while. Okay, I don't really know what I'm waiting for. Not without some hesitation, I played the first note of the track, and then the rest of the chord. The weight of the keys feels surprisingly familiar. The chord sounds nice and sweet. I forgot how nice it feels to play. I still feel everyone's eyes on my back, though. Okay, focus. I just need to go through the piece and not make any obvious mistakes. Desynchronizing left and right paw is just as hard as I remember. People often don't realize that, that and think that playing slow piano pieces is easy, but that's definitely not true. I feel like I'm writing an exam I forgot to study for. Okay, that's all I remember. I turn around to face the rest and see them all looking straight at me. See? That wasn't bad. Yeah. Sure. Garvin? Hey, I, I really mean it. Cheer up. You look like you're gonna cry. That was cool, Garvin. Really gave me chills. I really love Digcraft music. I'm glad you played that one. Bjorn. Miko gives him a disappointed look and shakes his head. Okay, that's quite funny. What's wrong? That's not dead craft music. That's a masterpiece from the 19th century. Oh! Not gonna lie, I was sure that was Norway from the dead craft soundtrack. I haven't played that game in a, quite a while now, though. I always love the music from it. It evokes so many memories now. I'm glad to see the time I spent teaching you did not go to waste, though, Carvin. Oh. Right. That's why this piece stuck with me. It was the one Miko himself taught me. Frankly, I surprised even myself. Although, that wasn't the best performance of this piece, to put it lightly. And it's not like I remembered much of it anyway. For someone who didn't play music, for someone who didn't play for a long time, that's really impressive, Garvin. Ooh, big yawn! Big yawn! You're really kind, all of you. I stand up from the piano and walk back to the sofa. My legs feel all wobbly under me, but I try to look calm and composed. I can't help but let out a big sigh of relief when I sit back down, leaning forward and hiding my snout in my open paws. Rune gets up and walks up to me, patting me on my back reassuringly. You did well, Carvin. Don't worry. I don't know a thing about piano, but I could teach you some basics of the guitar later, if you'd like. Actually, I wonder how does piano relate to guitar, if knowing how to play one helps with the other. Miko, can you play the guitar too? Just what I learned at primary school. It was so long ago that there's no point in even mentioning it. I remember maybe one song. That was an easy one, by Neutral Minnow Hotel. Oh yeah, of course. You mean the stereo plane over the sea. That one, exactly. Yeah. It's a classic. I don't think I've ever heard of it. It's not the kind of music you look for. It's the music that finds you. Anyway, you won't be able to help me much then. I'm afraid not. Unless you want me to teach you to play piano. Maybe someday. I have a bit too much on my paws lately. But thank you for the offer anyway. Would you mind playing some more, Miko? I don't remember the last time I heard someone play piano live. <laughs> I don't think I ever attended a peony piano concert. It feels different than listening to recordings. I can't really say what it is exactly, but it just feels so much more alive and magical. Save it right here, guys. I know a few more pieces. And we have time. Mm. As we sat together listening to Miko play, day slowly turned into night. Leaning on Bjorn through the window, I observed the last minutes of the evening sun, painting the sky red and orange. Soon after, the clouds started to give way to a clear, silky smooth sky, slowly fading to black. So many things happened today already. The afternoon is over, but the memories of it will stay with me forever. Ooh, that's pretty. Days end so fast here up north during winter. I don't feel tired at all. Quite the contrary, I'm full of energy, but it's already dark outside. Above me, the stars look like small pebbles scattered across the night sky. Here, far away from the city and its polluting lights, they shine so much brighter. There's even the subtle band of light that forms the Milky Way slightly visible. 
It's a very cliche thing. It's a very cliche thing to think. A very cliche thing to think. It's a very cliche thing to think. But it's mind blowing to think how big they actually are. So big and so distant. Impressive, isn't it? Hell yeah, Panther Daddy! We stayed in the common space for more than an hour, first listening to Miko's playing, then just walking, then just talking together. At the end, we were joined by Lake and Jorgen, who treated everyone with chocolate they brought with them. It was almost time for the stargazing to begin, so we hurried outside onto the terrace. Here we found a few other students already waiting, and several telescopes lined up at the edge of the terrace. The night sky here certainly is something. Next to the entrance stands Coach, together with a professor I am not familiar with. He's a burly badger, probably in his late 40s or 50s, looking rather friendly and approachable. Good evening, Professor. Good evening, Lake. And hello there, Jorgen. Evening, Professor. I hope you're well. I'm good, I'm good. Thank you. Wait, Carmen, don't you have anything warmer than that sweater? I do, of course. I do. Only it's back in my room. Oh, yeah. Right. I should have thought about that before. Wait here just a moment. Or come back inside with me. I nod and go after him back, back into the guest house. Oh, it's so warm here. I'm glad you noticed. Knowing me, I wouldn't ask anyone and freeze to death outside. Okay, I'll be back in a second. He dashes off into the corridor, leading through the residential part. His room where I assume he's going is one of the first ones, so it shouldn't take long. And indeed, after a short while, he emerges back from behind the corner, carrying a thick-looking black jacket in his paws. Here you are. You can hold on to this until you, until you have all your stuff back. Thank you, coach. I put it on over my sweater. It's a bit oversized, but at least it's warm and comfortable. Okay, we can go back now. Boys! Coach, play, Coach glances at his watch, then looks at the notebook he holds in his other paw. Uh, oh, one second, guys. That was weird. Oh, hopefully that didn't mess up the footage. Sorry about that, guys. We're back now. Uh, just something caused my window to switch. Sorry about that. Anyway, here we go. Let's pick right back up. Coach glances at his watch, then looks at the notebook he holds with his other paw. Looks like everyone is here already. We can start now. Let me introduce you to Professor Arn Fang. He will give you a crash course in astronomy and stargazing tonight. Thank you, Devin. Hello, everyone. It's nice to meet you all. So, you're here because you've signed up for stargazing as your activity for today. You probably expect to start with the telescopes, which you can see over there, but that's not what we're going to do. I understand that some of you might be more advanced in the topic, but we're going to start with the very basics today. We're lucky that the wind, we're lucky that the wind blew the clouds away. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to see how much, and would have to push. We wouldn't be able to see much, and would have to postpone the activity. Stars are favorable to us today. He chuckles at his own pun before continuing. Devin, can you go and turn the lights off? Sure thing. Stargazing for someone not versed in it might seem uninteresting. It's just looking at the sky, isn't it? Well, in a way it is, but it becomes interesting when you know what you're looking for. The sky is a truly beautiful thing in itself, but knowing what you are looking at transforms the experience. We will start our course with the simplest exercise. Look at the sky and try to locate the Earth's major constellation. That's easy. Bjorn is standing right there. Lake points at the bear and whispers to Jorgen, who, upon hearing that, hides his face in both his paws with a sigh. Thank you, Devin. So, now, can you find the Ursa Major by yourself? Let me save it right here, guys. Boop. I look up at the sky, but I have no idea what to look for. I've heard about that constellation, but at first glance, it's hard to recognize anything even a bit ursine looking. If you found it, please raise your paw. Glancing around, I see a few paws already in the air. I myself have no idea what to look for, though. Okay, so, now, how to find that constellation in the sky? When you look at Ursa Major, in its tail you will surely notice a familiar shape. You may know this group of stars as Carl's Vognen, Charles Wagon, or the Plow. Plow? That's a big deeper for you, Devin. Ah, sorry. British English sometimes still confuses me. Oh, that makes it much easier. 
I think everyone at least once in their life has found the plow in the sky. Only, unlike in the city, the sky here is filled with a multitude of stars. How am I supposed to find anything among so many? Counterintuitively, you may find out that locating specific stars is harder here because of how many stars are visible. Focus on the brightest ones and ignore all the small ones. I think I see it here, looking only for the brighter stars. I finally locate the familiar shape and raise my paw. Now, why is this important at all? A constellation is the third largest one in the night sky, and certainly one of the most well-known. It is extremely useful in navigation in the northern hemisphere of our planet. Even Homer in the Odyssey mentions Ursa Major as the constellation that never disappears from the sky and instead bathes in the ocean's waves. If we drew a line going through them, the last two stars of the bowl point us straight to Polaris. Who can tell me why is that important? Polaris is the... <clears throat> Polaris is the North Star. It's roughly above the North Pole and so it's the point around which the whole sky rotates. That's right! Thank you, Jorgen. What you might not know is that Polaris is actually a three-star system, composed of a primary star with two smaller companions. But that's a story for a different lesson. If anyone here is interested in night sky photography but doesn't have the money for expensive equipment, then you could take some nice photos knowing where Polaris is. With long exposures, you can get those beautiful star trails circling around the North Star. I like this guy already. It's a shame I don't have classes with him. Our physics professor is probably the grumpiest old man I've ever seen. He's really nice, but any joke about Uranus gets you thrown out of his class. <sighs> Lake knows something about that. Hell, Lake, I always thought you were a polite boy that never gets into trouble. I don't know where you got that idea. I can attest that it's completely untrue. So, it looks like everyone was able to locate the Ursa Major. That's great! For the next exercise, let's spice things up a bit. This time, you'll be using telescopes. You will take a closer look at Saturn through them. That is, if you manage to locate it. I will make it easy for you, though, because they're supposed to be fun activities after all. You were instructed to download a Sky Map app to your phones before the arrival. I hope you all did that. Oh, damn. If not, then do that quickly before we get to the next step. Devin, you can go too. Have some fun as well. Oh, if I can, then sure thing. Okay, so we don't have quite enough telescopes for all of you, so for the purpose of this exercise, you may form pairs or triples or whatever configurations you might fancy. I don't mind. So now, please, step up to the telescopes. I believe you can sort it into bigger groups when needed yourself. Doing as Professor Arn said, I walk up to a free telescope at the end of the terrace. Looking around, I see that all my friends are already either at their telescopes or paired up with someone else. Even Miko is walking towards one alongside Bjorn. Let me see it right here. Okay, does everyone in every group have their own telescope? Good! So now we can start. Named after the Roman god of time, Saturn is a good, a good object for observation for beginners. It's relatively easy to locate, and, I might say, fairly spectacular because of its rings. From my own observations, I can tell you that my students prefer to look at planets and stars. We have a bit of a closer relation with them, after all. You can't help but start to imagine what it might look like from even closer. Who knows? Maybe one of you will find some alien structures on one of the planets someday. But for now, look for an object with a golden color, shining steadily, just a tad bigger than the other ones around it. Is it this one right here? <laughs> First, you will need to locate it with your own eyes before finding it through a telescope. The mobile app you have on your phones will be very helpful. An object with a golden color shining steadily just a tad bigger than the other ones around it. Easy to say, hard to find. I, stare up, I start up the map, sky map, hoping that it will help. I have absolutely no idea how to use it. Maybe I should have read a manual or something before the lesson. I look around in desperation. Maybe I'd be better off joining someone else after all. Also, it's already the end of the day, and I still haven't asked anyone about sharing the room for tonight. I think it's finally the time to make that decision, and this might be the best moment for that. So, who am I gonna ask? Miko! Miko! Yes. Miko. I know that he would agree if I asked. He wanted to take, he wanted to take a room together with me from the beginning, after all. Why am I afraid of asking, then? 
I look around, searching for him. He's not far off from me, standing near one of the telescopes with Bjorn and Travis. I'm glad that Miko is making some new friends, too. I know that opening up to others isn't that easy for him. Or maybe that's no longer the case. A lot can change during three years. I know I changed a lot, too. We have some catching up to do, for sure. Oh, Carvin! Hey, what's up? Carvin? Hello, good seeing you again. Hey, thanks. Um, how's the assignment coming along? We're done, but only thanks to Travis. He's experienced with these sort he's experienced with these sorts of things, so we asked him for a little help and instead he did almost everything himself. I got my own telescope back at home. Using this one is no different. Did you finish already, Carvin? Uh, I didn't even start. I'm not sure how to use that sky map. No, oh, it's easy. It simply shows you the part of the sky you point your phone at. There's a menu on the right on the right where you can choose specific planets and stars and the map guides you to them. Travis takes out his phone and taps on the screen, launching the app and showing me step by step how to do this. It really does look easy. But I'm sure it's more fun doing this than the, doing this with the others. I'm glad I joined them now. Actually, I'd hope that Miko would try to team up with me and not Bjorn, but then again, it's not like I spent a whole lot of time with him today. Then again, it's it's not like I okay, I was right. Unless it was Bjorn who approached him about that after about that while I went ahead. What is this unpleasant feeling in my throat? Am I jealous of him? Maybe a bit, but he's my longtime friend, so that's, that's understandable. Wow, I had no idea I could be so possessive. I surprise myself every day, just not always positively. That seems easy enough. Anyway, we already have the telescope in position, so you can take a look if you want. But if you want to try setting it yourself, then I don't want to ruin your fun. Eh, if you have everything ready, then that's even better. I'll go do the same on my telescope. You three have fun. Ah! Alright. Right before we get to ask the question. I think that's the perfect time to end it, guys. Because then we'll get to see more during the next episode. Ooh, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!